everybody and welcome back to the Goldbridge Saves Football Podcast. What a weekend, what a week ahead. Loads to talk about. Been proved right on Haaland, been proved wrong on Arsenal and Man United. Are they finished? And who's the favourite for the title and relegation now? We've also got an amazing little bit of conversation about Son from Spurs. But Will, you're here. Nothing's going to change that contractually. What are your thoughts? Yep, uh, you're locked into me for the rest of your life. I got that signed, sealed, season, and delivered. Season, no years. Season. Look at the fine print. Uh, no, really looking forward to. I mean, we're just business end, isn't it? And it's a business week. We're straight into the midweek, so I'm excited. Blues lost, won, got a ticket. Was it worth it? Doesn't matter because we're here to talk about the Premier League. We are, and I suppose we should start off with. Um, and I suppose you missed it, but that's what you get when you don't pay top dollar. He should have gone in with are you going to apologise to Arsenal, Mark? And I would have said no. And he would have said, yes, you should. And I would have said, OK, I'll concede. I said they were going to win yeah. against Manchester City. First things first, um, I did a video on that football about it. So I've had my say. Do you think the criticism of the game itself being boring was right? Or do you actually praise Arsenal for going there and getting the point, which I actually was proved right about? Yeah, all right, steady on. No, I think... Right. Good that Arsenal got the point, but yeah, I mean, I was so excited for that game. Sat down, got my bet on. I was really excited for it, and it just was absolute stink fest, wasn't it? It was that team trying to get the point, which they did, but it just ties back into what we'll come on to later about modern football, systematic, formulaic, tiring. Just a bit of in, you bring Jack Grealish on, you think you're going to get this individual brilliance, and even he's like, I mean, you see Pep going at him at the end of the game, don't you? And it's just because he's not playing in the system. Um, but for the title race, we don't want City to win. I'm on board with that. So it's a good day for that. You know what I think? I just think people need to take it for what it is. Sometimes you go for a weekend away with the missus, you have a few drinks and you think, oh, this might be exciting tonight, a break from the norm. Yeah. And then, you know, actually it just ends up being the same as it is at home. You, you might don't fall know. asleep straight away. You might fall a bit asleep. Older. You might do. So look, I, 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 look, I said, do I need to apologise to Arsenal? <clears throat> I think in a sense I do. Um, I predicted Man City would win 2-0. I still think that was potentially going to happen. I was right about the international break. I was right about Arsenal not being able to replicate what they were doing before the international break. But what they did do is defend ridiculously well and, and limited Man City to absolutely nothing. So in a sense, I do need to apologise to Arsenal because I didn't think they would get the result. I, to get a clean sheet, and I think it's the first time Man City haven't scored at the Etihad in two years, they achieved something I didn't think was possible. But I was right in the sense that I didn't fancy Arsenal to go there and win. But the the point is brilliant and I think they deserve the praise for it, which I suppose poses one question. Do you think that, uh, I've heard a lot of people saying this, do you think that Gabriel and Saliba are the best centre-back pairing in the Premier League at the moment? Because I don't, but you do. I think they're definitely the best pairing in the Premier League because the ones that will probably come on to, there's a clear standout individual. And I think in that partnership, Saliba is the better one. And even in that game, he was the standout one. But I still think Gabriel's at a level where he's pushing him. Whereas you look at like, every time we go to a Liverpool back four, it's Van yeah. Dijk mm -hmm. and he can bring you up. I mean, I could play next to Van Dijk and he'd probably bring me up to a certain level. Yeah. So that's why I'd go with Gabriel and Saliba as the best duo combined. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm not going to get into some argument with hipsters. Uh, I think that the Gabriel Saliba thing uh, across the season, consistency and games played makes them deservedly the best pairing. I would actually say Canate and Van Dijk, if they played more, are a better pairing. But you're right, they don't play as much. And I think the thing that Saliba is absolutely fantastic, but Gabriel has sort of, like you say, he's pushed up on consistency. He's a bit of a shit house as well. He gets in the ears. He's great at he the scores end, it? goals. Yeah, I, I think I think they've done fantastic well. But that feeds into point one of why Goldbridge should be listened to. Um, oh Erling Haaland, yeah. I said a few weeks ago, yeah. I said a few weeks ago, millions of views clipped. I said Erling Haaland doesn't start for Liverpool. Oh, well, Jan Arge Fjortoft, button it, just because he's Norwegian. It's the Norwegian Striker Society. Shut up. You know what? I was right because you didn't listen. I'm not one of those people who start saying stuff for clips. I do do that, but <laughs> I didn't say it about that. I meant it from a complete layered. And even yesterday when I said it, people were going... He definitely starts for Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp would drive to Manchester and pick him up. No, you're exposing yourself as a footballing peasant if you think that. Liverpool play football with a striker that has to work hard, be part of the link-up, you know, part of the hold-up, create, not just score goals. Erling Haaland is, in my opinion, the best penalty box striker in the world. But time and time again, he's about as useless as a chocolate fire guard when the fire's on, yep. um, <laughs> in the big games. 
Yeah. When, I, the, when the heat's on, he melts. If I'm a footballing peasant, please, sir, can I have some more? Because I think Erling Haaland was still walking to that Liverpool side. No, but you're not listening. No, you're not listening. Look, let me speak, Simon. Will, shut up. No. <laughs> you're talking nonsense. You're, you're just doing it to try and... Trust me, 90% of the world's with me on this one. No, no, don't no, no. fall into the trap. I don't care about 90% of the world because I think Erling Haaland literally ties into what we were start speaking about at the start of the show. He is part of this system, this Formula 8 thing, and there's so many things he can do, but in those parameters, he mm. can't be set free. At but, Borussia Dortmund, you've got the prime showreel of what he can do when he's getting in behind, linking mm. up play a lot better. Linking up play. Roy Keane said he's League he 2 at best. daisy chain. Oh, shut up. When he's, at the moment, Roy Keane said he's playing at League 2 level. That was too far. And too, that, that, that was, that, that's obviously, that, that, uh, that you, you, I, I don't like your dad and if, if he's got a, <laughs> and he's got a YouTube career in him uh, yeah. that's a perfect thumbnail but I think what we do and we we always say this when we're speaking about either ors and stuff form form is temporary class is permanent and Erling Haaland has that and I think there's enough to be showed at Borussia Dortmund and you have to take in the facts that he is in a system and he can't get out he needs help Dortmund, Dortmund, Dortmund. Yeah. All you ever do is talk about Dortmund. Jaden Sancho's playing well for Dortmund again. Exactly. Surprise, surprise. The league is rubbish. Because he's set free. No, it's rubbish. You're it's rubbish. a rubbish league. The Premier League is the best league in the world. And what people make a mistake of here, let me just spell it out for the simpletons, right? I'm not saying Erling Haaland isn't world class. He is. But... He wouldn't work in a Liverpool system. And if you don't realise that, you're not watching football. Liverpool striker has to work within a structure and work hard. Erling Haaland doesn't work hard. He doesn't He doesn't track back. He doesn't link up. He is a penalty box striker. And that is why numerous teams over the last two years have shut him down. And that's why Gabriel and Saliba did it. Because if he got a chance in the box from five yards out, it's curtains. I just it's not curtains it's you know what I mean it's it's over yeah but he won't start for Liverpool he would start for Arsenal he there's no point start him, him starting for Man United of course he probably starts for Spurs probably starts for Villa starts but, for Real but Madrid. in a Liverpool system well maybe he would start for Real Madrid actually yeah because they, it's a crap league where you're going to get loads of chances but in Liverpool system that is the victorious thing and I am victorious so shut up and let's talk about something else well, just on that. Let the chat decide. Yeah. You, look, you are the chat. Get involved in the chat. Let us know your thoughts on this and many other more interesting debate points because you know what? There's plenty of other podcasts out there. They're desperately trying to get uh, guests on and they're fantastic. But you have the power with this. This is the podcast of yours. So tell your friends, tell your family, get in the comments because you're the ones growing this podcast and it's real conversation. We're here to save football. Erling Haaland doesn't start for Liverpool. That's a really good speech. You're, you are the chat champions I am right well one thing we can both agree on this season is Alexis McAllister we've both been waxing lyrical about him again the ball's in behind at the weekend but are we at a stage now where we can put him in this sort of midfield three elite of we're looking at Rodri Casemiro Ca steady on though you've had you say you're getting a bit silly Declan Rice and McAllister yeah that top three is McAllister forcing himself in there and then you have to throw back the clock to 30 mil initial fee well, I don't know where you were on this, but I certainly know that we have been talking about that yeah. Liverpool midfield from the very start. And this is why this podcast is great. Yeah, you've got me and Will, but the community is great, the greatest. And we collectively, if you are part of the Ultras, we started... I The mainstream have failed here. Like, you know, they're not in Pratt of the Week for this, but they will be if they're not careful because I can't understand why Alexi McAllister in the mainstream is not getting the praise that we're going to heap on him now and have done all season. Jurgen Klopp rebuilt a midfield in one summer. Ridiculous, impossible, and he did it. And Alexi McAllister, from pretty much August, I said, been really impressed with him. He's the focal point, simple pass, tenacious, can create what a signing he's been. And here we are in March, well, April now, and, you know, we're talking about it again. And yet still, I don't watch Match of the Day or Talk Sport or anything like that and get any coherent acknowledgement about it but what I like Will is Rice at Arsenal Rodri at Man City McAllister at Liverpool when you look at that weekend no goals in the Liverpool and in the Arsenal game um, from behind in the Brighton game for Liverpool those three players are actually the star players of the weekend for me and what a refreshing change that you know it's not about the Haaland's or the Salah's this season, especially, I think Rice is probably player of the season for Arsenal. Mm. Rodri's probably player of the season for Man City. 
And McAllister probably is my player of the season for Liverpool. So look, you know, how do you split all three? They're massively fundamental to their teams. And the thing with him as well, it was just when Brighton was sitting deep, those balls in behind were like, they were like a sandwich, but you know, like a 54 degree No, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to get out of the bunker, you chip them on in, it's got to be perfect. And it, and he's doing that. Well, it was his assist to Salah, wasn't it? Yeah, as well? they were so nice and delicate. So even from, you know, we speak about the depreciation in modern football with it being all systems and everything. The way he can pick a pass is, you know, second to none, isn't it? Yeah. Where would you where would you rank him still? I still think that um Well let, maybe let's not do overall because I think that's clear. But if you had to do this season in terms of form, where would you put the three of them? I think it look, if I was ranking them in general, I think Rodri has to still be number one probably Rice 2, McAllister 3. But based on the season expectations and what they've achieved, I'd put Rodri 3 because you'd expect him to do what he's done. Yeah. You wouldn't expect McAllister to do what he's done necessarily in his first season stepping up. And Declan Rice, £100 million, not many people. So it's between Rice and McAllister for me. But I, I, I don't want to get involved in ranking those three because I, you know, I genuinely appreciate all three of them. I think they've been fantastic uh, for what they've done. Interesting point, what you're saying though, and Niall was talking about this off screen. Yeah. We, Son for Spurs, what's he got to do with the title? Absolutely nothing. He plays for Spurs. But Niall was saying, you know, Son, surely he might start for a lot of these top teams. And he was saying that Arsenal, Man City, very structured, you know, not really any flair there. Um, Son starts for any team in the Premier League for me. Any team in the Premier League. He, you know, Man City, 100%. Liverpool, 100%. Yeah, and I, I Arsenal hundred th- percent, and I think it's been great because it's been sort of this season without Kane. He's just become another level. Obviously, mm. had the injury as well, and going away to the the Asia Cup. But just, I just love him. Like mm. to be a captain and a leader as well. I just think, what is he thirty thirty one now? I think yeah, so he yeah. Is he, won't, on a, he won't be having a big move anywhere else. But it just feels that last, not the last of the old guard, but it just feels like he's kept the essence of like what, why we like football. And expect, and probably the big refreshing thing for him is Big Ange coming in the summer mm. because it's almost like right that ties perfectly into my attributes and my traits, and I can kick on from here. Massively popular player. I think he's one of those players that universally is liked probably by everybody other than Arsenal fans because of the rivalry. And um, I I think that when it comes to flair, yeah, great, great player. But uh, the fact that we won't ever see him play for a Liverpool or a Man City or a Real Madrid is in a way sad, but obviously it's a massive positive for Spurs. But um, I'd nothing... never say never on that as well. I just feel like the way football's going, like, you, you know, when it's 30, 35, 40 might be the new 35, mm. just because of like modern science and everything and the way that players can rest and recover. And I know there's a lot of injuries that are coming about. I mean, the Newcastle got absolutely decimated at the weekend, didn't they? But I just feel like 40 will be the new 35, which might be quite good for you. Yeah, well, I'm playing again this summer, so 45 could become the new, new 21. Don't push it. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? I think Son does start for any team in the Premier League. I think that the, the flair thing is a dying breed. Um, you go back 20 years ago and look at goal of the month and all that sort of stuff. The goals are very different to what we get now. I think they are quite formulaic and quite structured. Um, which you know is what? Why... It's a cut back at the, at the, at the byline, isn't it? Mm. And then a tap in. And I love... Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I love system breakers I mean this is what's exciting about Kobe Mainu the ability in the midfield to skip past the player it's a system breaker and I think Son's that sort of player but look who plays left wing for Man City Doku is erratic Grealish is under un, underutilised Son walks in there who plays left wing for Arsenal Martinelli well Son's better than him who plays left wing for Liverpool Diaz is fantastic Son is better so he does. He walks into any Premier League side. And I think, you know, we we, we are top centric. We've been talking about the title and we talk about the race for top four. Son has always been underrated, but I think, you know what, he does, he does you know, he, we're here to save football and by saving football, we're here to identify those players that actually play the game the way we want it to be played. And yeah, you know, when we talk about the bottom as well, Son would play for Luton. I've said it. I'm happy oh, to I say know. that. Yeah, yeah. Are they going down, by the way? Oh, oh, hold on, on. Before we talk about Luton, who's winning the league? Yeah, well, big weekend. Liverpool three points clear of City, two points clear of Arsenal. I think that Arsenal won't win the league because their running is horrible. Yes. I think they needed to beat Man City to do that, but you can't expect them to go and win at the Etihad. It's difficult. I think it's still Man City for me. I won't write them off, but Liverpool can basically lose a game with that goal difference and still be marginal favourites. Um, I could see Man City winning every single game though, whereas Liverpool have got massive game at Old Trafford, which we'll be previewing on Friday. And also they've got to go to Villa. I just feel that Liverpool might 
not have enough to stop City. But we're still assuming City are the team of last year, which they're quite clearly not. Yeah, they're definitely not. I think that experience that they're void of will come to haunt them in the running. I think I've picked Liverpool. I stuck with them. Even when you were trying to push me, you're chopping and changing left, right and centre. That's the way it's going to go. No, I've stuck with Liverpool. Uh, Opta also backing them 48%. Man. I think they have to be favourites, yeah. Yeah, and you just think that, that they've sort of travelled through the waters when they've had, you know, Trent's been out, the centre-back pairings changed every other week, uh, Robertson's been out, that they've dealt with and not necessarily brought in senior pros, it's been the youngsters that have stepped up and just tying into this whole narrative of Jurgen Klopp, it just sort of feels... I, I, I feel like I'm saying Liverpool, but like I still feel like my gut saying Man City. That's why I'm that's why yeah. I'm like that's why I'm saying City because you just can't write them off. Um, it's funny actually there were some City fans at the weekend going, oh it's typical when they get, when when we get into the running we start getting injuries and I went probably I go shut up. Yeah. Shut, I mean Liverpool's injury records are unbelievable. Oh Walker's injured and Aki's injured. Oh just bring you've got Var, you know they've got they're, they're not getting key injuries in the areas where it matters. And well, they said they had like hundred something million pound of injuries but then they still had a 200 million pound back line as well yeah. didn't they yeah I, st- I still think they're dangerous for Arsenal look I still want Arsenal to win it as a United fan but their running is hard they've got to go Brighton at the weekend they've got to play Spurs and they've got to play Villa they've got to go to Old Trafford which might be easy might be hard you never know the running of Arsenal is difficult and they're playing catch up and I don't see Liverpool and Man City They've been there before. That I, I can't, got the easiest running. I can't well, see them dropping many points. But then we have got the factors of Champions League, Europa League for Liverpool, mm. FA Cup still for Manchester City. Yeah, I just think people. We get to the point now. We go right. Liverpool are favourites. This two months. I mean, we'll do a podcast on Thursday. We'll have had the midweek games. It will change. Monday it will change. I'd love Villa. If I tell you what, if Villa can get something at City on Wednesday night, that would be absolutely incredible. Because when you look at the the, the week this week, I think Arsenal, Luton, yeah, Liverpool, Man City, Sheffield United. Liverpool, yeah. So you, you, Liverpool and Arsenal should win. If Man City were to drop points at home to Villa, which is probably unlikely, but you never know with Villa, yeah. that would be probably Man City. I think if Man City drop points again, they're gone. No, I still I still worry. Nah, still worry they're I, lurking. Yeah, well, they are lurking, but I think they, they probably would be gone. Um, Do you want to move on to Champions League chat? Because we did mention Villa there. Yeah. Uh, Tottenham win, but Villa have got to play all three teams in the Champions League. Man United, gone. Champions League gone. Yeah, I think it has to be gone. I think the Fulham game will, will will ultimately be the one where we lost that momentum. But you've got to beat Brentford away. And um, honking performance. Though, it, was, it? it was. It was. It was. You know what? It's, Great clip of you though. So you got a rough and smooth, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm never going to not celebrate those moments. We were talking about it before. It's like we did it. Funny enough, we did it against Brentford at home. Yeah. They deserve to beat us at home. One nil into stoppage time, and we won two one. A lot of United fans didn't want to celebrate it me and many others did because it's football it's the club you love you you know you, you, I think it's a boring thing to go well we didn't deserve it well, so the I'm celebration not going to celebrate police come out, yeah they? it's a joke but I've got to be honest Brentford really if they if we'd won that game you, you almost started just giving page because it was it would have been completely and utterly yeah. a robbery um, but yeah I, I think top I think Man United don't deserve Champions League football and I think we're finished this season in relation to the aspirations that we would want does that is that the nail in the coffin for Ten Hag? Uh, for me, I don't think it should be. I think when you watch that game against Brentford, there's too many things that are not tactical. I mean, there are things tactical, but Brentford looked like hungrier, more disciplined, more concentrated. The amount of five-yard passes not going, the amount of jogging back, the lack of concentration. You don't you don't get taught that on the training ground. This is no. something that you learn in your back garden when you're five. You know, passing five yards. So I'm like. You can blame the manager, but I would hope that Ineos, who are in tr- charge now, would look at that and go, ah, there's something fundamentally wrong with these players. When you look at Brentford, their combined 11 wages is probably a quarter of a million a week. Yeah. And United starting 11 is probably two million a week. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not getting value for money there. Well, even Jim Radcliffe said that in one of his first interviews, isn't it? You can have all like the stats in the world, but the, the stat that proves the most deadly is like if you spend more money, you're most likely to win. So... And if they're not delivering, there's going to have to be some chops and changes. But you'd expect us to beat Coventry, but that won't be end. That, that's you, not look, Coventry well, are using that. Mark Robbins will have that up on the screen. Well, you get and, in, get in. I get well, and also the, 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 you'd watch that Brentford game and you go, "We'd fancy our chances against Brentford, so why not yeah. against Man United?" But if United get through that, they've got a low chance against Man City, who I think will beat Chelsea. But you'd hope that maybe something can happen. You win an FA Cup, and it's a it's, it's something to salvage from a shit season. 
Yeah, but the big benefit, if you're trying to take a positive, is the Europa League soundtrack is better than the Champions League one in my eyes. Whoa, whoa. I don't know it. I thought it was. Oh, I, thought, you do. I thought it was Emmerdale. Do, 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 do. Whoa, whoa. No, that's better. I don't know it. You do know it. You've had enough experience of it. I don't. I don't. I have it on mute. Um, Champions League though. Aston Villa got Manchester City. They've got an incredibly tough run in. They've got to play all the title race teams. Tottenham. Obviously, a bit Jackal and at sometimes. Good win in the end against Luton. Man United out of it. But it just feels crazy for me from where we were to where we are now that Aston Villa are still front runners for the Champions League. Well, they both should get it for fifth place. But I suppose the the, the, the real thing is, can you finish fourth? And I, I, I'd, I'd fancy Spurs because Villa have still got Europe. Um, but it's a big week, isn't it? Spurs got West Ham. Uh, Villa have got Man City. Um They've all got to play those teams at the top. But ultimately, I think the Champions League race might be a little bit dull because they'll both get it. And then we were going to talk about the relegation battle quickly. Yeah. I, I think I've been up and down about Luton and I know you've been up about them all the time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think I think they're gone. Um, Why? Because I, I, I looked at the fixtures and they need to start winning games and it's not easy to win games in this league. Like they've got, what well, they've got, Arsenal, Brentford at home. I just think they need to go and get 10 points quickly and I just look at their running and I go I can't see it and the thing about Luton is I think they've been a breath of fresh air but if we're being completely blunt Everton and Forest it's only because they've had points deductions that it's close like they're not doing enough to stay up they're the best of the bad bunch and they have been a, a breath of fresh air but I just don't think they've done enough I think that the big thing for them, I'm probably going to have egg on my face, is I can't really remember a time where they've had an absolute tonk in this season. And if no. it is, it's only once or twice. And I think for a team like that... It's great. It, yeah, it's fantastic. But you know, even at the weekend, like, I'll get onto it for Pratt of the Week, but like, Burn, like off Burnley are dead and buried and then they go yeah, and get a Chelsea. point. Chelsea. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that season's absolutely done. But I just... I'm, I'm with you, Luton. I've been with you since the start. I'll be like the violinist on the Titanic. I'll be there playing to the end. Women and children first. I'll be there backing you. I love yeah. you, Luton. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, as I said at the weekend, if I'm on the lifeboat, because I will be, yeah. sod this women and children oh, yeah, first. Be, yeah. It's 2024, Equality Street. <laughs> so, but when I come back and old Kate Winslet's blowing a whistle blowing and her? I see Will, yeah. I'll, you're coming Would on. Would you let me on your door? I'd let her, I'd let her, I'd let you on the boat before I let her on. Yeah. Most disappointing end to a film ever. That selfish cow should not be let on a lifeboat. Well, they did the science. No, I'm not talking about Kate Winslet. I'm talking about Rose. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I let Kate, Kate Winslet on the boat and leave you in. Yeah. She's a bloody good actress. And um, but, Didn't but, they say that scientifically it was proven that you could actually get another person on that raft, on that door, whatever it was? It matters not, Will. She is from the aristocracy. Either She's, or, Winslet or Rose. Yeah. 18 years of age or not, she's had 18 years of a silver spoon in her mouth. Yeah, exactly. He's had... 18 years of poverty. And he's underrated, he is, because, you know, he's come on that boat, he's not expecting anything, and he's got his way up to the upper decks, and he and he's bloody tried hard, and, he, and it's come true for him. Why Why does she live? Yeah. I, you know what? No one can see. Tip the thing up. Get on. Oh, let me on. I thought we were in love. Yeah. We were. It was a great time. Yeah. Get off my hat. Get off before I punch you. Yeah. That, 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 no, no, that would be too far. That would be too you, far, That would yeah. be too far. That but you could just far. push the hand away. Yeah, exactly. It's a film at the end of the day. It's, it's fictitious. So I can be vicious with yeah. fictitious. Nice. Yeah, lovely stuff. Uh, get your either or's in for films that we should do in the future. Yeah. Uh, about ending scenes. I'd love to get into the ending of Lost with you, but that's a different podcast for a different day. Favourites for title uh, for Champions League then? You going with, sticking with Tottenham? Spurs, yeah, for fourth, yeah. I still um, think Villa will get it though. And favourites to go down, the usual suspects, Luton, Sheffield United and... Burnley. Um, one we were speaking about from the Brentford game, I forgot to mention, t Tony. Yeah. It felt like it was a bit of an audition gone wrong for him. Too hard, Tony. Yeah, nice. Very good from you. Try hard. Or Tony yeah, too hard. Yeah, look, he's a good player. He had a lot to do with the equaliser. <clears throat> getting a bit emotional about <clears throat> that. Titanic, aren't you? Getting yeah. a bit emotional in it. But um, yeah, I think uh, it was the quintessential performance. And I said it before, it could bite us in the arse because I don't think United should be looking to buy Tony when we've got Haaland. But... I think he... Hoyland. Hoyland. He ain't got Haaland. He wouldn't Haaland. work for Man United. He doesn't run hard enough. He wouldn't work for United. He wouldn't get any bloody service. But um, see, even I, I can't even remember the striker's name for Man United, which is the same for... That's the problem Rashford, Bruno and Ganatra yeah. have got. But um, dum, tsh, the, I didn't even know we had a striker. I would just shoot from 30 yards, you useless pricks. <laughs> um, no, I think uh, I, I think with, um, with Tony, brilliant striker. I thought he had a good game against United, but yeah. I think he fell into the category, and we've seen it before, he's almost got his name in lights he knows if he scores a good goal in this game he's you yeah. know it's going to 
and and it, and it just didn't work for him because he had his chance. He had a few chances and it just didn't pop for him. I mean, other people did as well. But um, I just thought the way he controlled the ball in the, at the end was yeah. like it, that moment where you're under pressure and you feel like you should have got something out of the game and he just turned something into nothing from bringing it down, the jink back and then picking out that man in the box was fantastic. I said it last week. I think he's a good striker. I don't think he's what United need. I don't think it's what Arsenal want. I think he's perfect for Chelsea. I did. I, I, every time I watch Chelsea, I think Tony... He might not be a long-term guy, no, but for the next, seasons you know, you, you've got financial problems. Yeah. He would be perfect. He's London-based. He's got everything that you need. You just need someone to go in and score 20 goals. And just lead the line well. Yeah, yeah. And he's arrogant. You know, he's got it all. One thing I got a bit, you know, I'm a man, I'm not a man of the stats. I'm not a man of the formation. I'm a man of the narrative. And Mason Mount's had an absolute stinking season, hasn't he, for yeah, injuries. Yeah. And he came back and then to get that goal in the 95th minute. and it's then a shame. Bloody Man United couldn't even hold on for it. It's a brilliant goal as well. I mean, it sort of came out of nothing, but he took it with his left foot and you thought, oh, this could be the spark. And then, no, we'll mess that up. Yeah. But hopefully he'll get some game time. People have been messing things up. It's time for Pratt of the Week. Yes, lots of nominations in this week. We've had, I've got a few written down mm. here. Do you, I mean, do you want to start with the one that's the constant? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think that we've spoken about this quite a lot and it's um, it's the refereeing. It has to be. Um it, I, I, you know what? I'm not. We were talking about before, saying, "Oh, we're a bit bored of doing this," but actually, I'm not bored of doing it because we're here as a community. This is your podcast. We've said from the start this is about talking about the big topics and not sugarcoating it. And constantly this season, we've spoken about saving football from the integrity issues from the PGMOL. And for me, it seems to get worse. It's like almost like on the international break, they had two weeks in Benidorm and just came back with a hangover because it was awful. And we, the problem again, Will, is consistency and everybody at home. You know, you watch that. I didn't watch, stupid, I'm a Pratt. Yeah, you are. I am a Pratt. So we were going to do a, a watch along on, on Saturday and on that's football. And I was like, not going to do Newcastle against West Ham. I'm going to do the three o'clocks and miss a, miss a seven goal thriller. I was watching the second half and that, that what my big problem is if you if we talk about the big two, the Chelsea penalty, and the Newca- the Newcastle penalty. Yeah, I don't care if a referee on the pitch gets it wrong. You see it in the Championship all the time. Oh, it can happen. You bloody do. But it's inexcusably disgusting that VAR reviews both of those and stands. But well, actually, the Newcastle game he didn't give the penalty. VAR said, "Come and have a look at it." The Chelsea one he gave it, and they stuck by him. I mean, it's just incredible to me. We start with the Gordon one. He doesn't even get the ball. He put, he puts his foot around Kelvin Phillips. It's, it's just not a... It's a foul on Phillips, if anything. Yeah, but I, I think it, the, the better comparison in that game is when I think it was Kudos was through on goal and Dan Byrne shoulder barges him. Right, so right or wrong, the ref doesn't give anything, doesn't give a foul. But then the Chelsea one, the Burnley player, there's literally like a hand on him and with he goes no force. forward yeah, instead yeah. of backwards and he gets a yellow and like you said off air he, he ends up getting sent off for that and yeah. Burnley managed to galvanise from it but it's just that those things are so similar it's just how can professional referees have such a different opinion when they're you know they're in this training bubble they're all looking at the same things at the start of the season you've got Howard Webb like leading the way well, apparently so. He's probably just more worried about getting his airtime and Michael Owen. It's just very frustrating when those simple things are not being done. And then the whole backdrop of it is you've got a backup system to be like, excuse me, mate, I, I stand by it. Whoever that assistant was in the Liverpool Spurs game needs an MBE and needs to be knighted and head of the refereeing association by the end of the season. Well, there was one in the Brighton game as well. Nunez is on the back post and he gets pulled back. It's soft, but he does get pulled back. No penalty. 24 hours after the worst penalty against Chelsea Burnley. And it's like, you know, if you watch EastEnders or Coronation Street and you watch it on a Monday and then you watch it on a Wednesday and it's someone else is playing Phil Mitchell or Ken Barlow, you're like, what's Hello, going on? I'm Phil Mitchell. What's going on? You know, it's not even a man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, he's not even from England. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's not even a person. It's a polar bear. What's going on? And I think that's the problem. The consistency is so aggravatingly annoying that... We're watching it as fans going, hold on, yesterday that was a penalty. And then that is a penalty and it's not a penalty. And, like you know, the Gordon one as well, he doesn't win the ball. He just sticks his foot in the way yeah. and then it gets turned around. So it's like, well, at the end of the day, like VAR has to step in there. And why is it not stepping in and saying, well, the VA, the Newcastle one is the referee didn't give the penalty on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. So why are VAR looking at it and going, oh, we think that's a penalty? I mean, you don't understand the science of football. You've, yeah. you've never played the game you think that's a penalty so look yeah I know we do it every week but we are already at a point where if Man City win this league title 
then the integrity is gone. Not because of 115, because Liverpool have been robbed of about six points. You could argue Arsenal have been robbed of two, but it, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And I think this league, they've got to do something over the summer. Yeah, they won't. Uh, they never do. Uh, well, that's the problem, isn't it? The mainstream just don't talk about it now. Match of the day on Saturday night, they didn't even talk about the Gordon penalty. Yeah. So, And, and we're aware of this. There's a lot to get in in match of the day, though. No, but I'm aware of this. I don't know where you're aware of it. I'm aware of the conversations that go on between the media and the PGMOL every couple of weeks. Oh, well, yeah, you've been a part of them. Well, I, I, I refused to go on it. I, I I did get invited. I did find out how to get on it, and then I refused to do it because I'm like, actually, they're just not going to listen. They're not going to do anything about it. But they have these conversations every two weeks, and it's like... It's almost like the media are their protector now because there's so much, there, there is nobody really other than ourselves and other maybe other content creators, but the mainstream are not shouting them out. That is not well, they can go right. like this that guy's, censorship. But yeah, they can go like, oh, this guy's saying this over here. Like, can you not have a word with him? But like, you, even the fact that they're highlighting it, it's like, that's just taking the game away from the people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're not being listened to. We're being suppressed by data, dictatorship. Um, one of the teams that we've mentioned a lot, I've already put them in Pratt of the Week, Chelsea. I just thought this is one of the worst Premier League sides yeah. that we're going to see uh, in the history of the Premier League. Football started in 92, according to well, some people. Rodriguez hit the bar. Yeah, he could have won, won it. Yeah. So not only did Chelsea not beat Burnley, Burnley had 10 men and they still managed to get a point. I just thought... If ever a game summed up Chelsea, Pochettino this season, it was that one. Yeah, well, I, I think when Chelsea go 1-0 up and they've got 10 men, Burnley, you think, well, that's it. I I actually was then, I turned my attention on the watch along to the Spurs-Luton game because Luton were winning 1-0. And then people were like, the, you need you need to keep an eye on the Burnley-Chelsea game. I was like, nah, there's no point. And then they, they scored two goals from behind twice. And it's just like, that's Chelsea in a in a game really isn't it they just they're just a weird weird team and yeah um i wouldn't sack pochettino i've said it before i think similarly with manchester united it's a player problem you bring a manager in there people say Mourinho. yeah you defend better but that's a short term plaster that is one thing i would like to it's a new feature i'm starting uh, reasons to be cheerful for the euros as an england fan the fact that you know, we always associate flair with being abroad, European, mm. Brazilian. Cole Palmer dropping a Penenka penalty at 1-0. Young guy. I mean, the absolute balls on him. Does he win uh, Young Player of the Year for you? That is a great question. Uh, well, it's it's where's the cutoff point as well? Because well, you, do yeah, you go up you to 24? Can... Do you st- I mean, Saka would still be in there. I don't know why it goes up to 24, though. I, yeah. thought it was the, I, th- I thought as long as you were 21 in the calendar year or something. So I, th- no, I, always I think thought that's them... under 21s. All oh, right, okay. The young player. Because remember, didn't Dali Ali win it when he was like 23 or something? I think 23 is the cutoff. It okay. must be something like that. But I think he probably, well, let us know. I think Cole Palmer, unless we're, I mean, Declan Rice would be way over that. Alexi McAllister's way over that. So yeah, I think Cole Palmer, being, as a, being a new signing at a new club and basically being the talisman for Chelsea, I can't think of and anybody. And just the backdrop of going like, oh, I'm at City, they just want to treble. Yeah. Nah, I'm going to go and forge my own path as Having well. Having to deal with that Tim Sherwood question as well. He's, yeah. he's, 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 gone through, <laughs> he's gone through a lot. No, no, I think I think he surely has to be, you know, when you're performing and getting praise in a bad team as well, I think I think he has to be a strong contender, yeah. Yeah. Um, should we just go through the remaining games? We'll do a bit of either or for the fixtures that are coming up this Who's week. Who's part of the week then? Uh, oh, yeah. That'd be a good one to finish yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's your podcast. You can choose. I did have Jesse Lingard on there. There's only a report I've seen, but apparently he's already uh, odds with the manager out there and they're thinking about putting him out of the team after that sort of strange move going to, I think it's Seoul FC. Um he sold his soul. Yeah, and he's in career and his career might be over. Yeah. Um, this is brilliant. This is top class off the cuff banter. Yeah, clip that, please. Yeah. That's fantastic. No, um, yeah, I think it's just a strange one. I mean, look, Jesse Lingard needed to leave Manchester United, but I didn't think he was such a... You he should know, have signed for West Ham when he went to Forest. I didn't think he was such a lost soul that he'd end up in Seoul. Um, and... But no, I thought he was better than that. The West Ham loan deal was where his career went, really, because yeah, yeah. for some reason he ended up signing for Forrest for money and, and it just never really played. So, yeah, I mean, Lingard, look, we're not talking about Gaza here. We're talking about Jesse, Ling- Jesse Lingard. And I think that, um, yeah, his career has gone off a cliff. Um, again, you, you question the people who are around him, advising him. Um, he's obviously spoken in the past about mental health issues, etc. We've seen that with Deli Ali as well. So... I think it, I think it, look he's a, he's probably earned enough bread out of football. Um, he's you know he's very social media aware, so maybe he'll end up on match of the day or something like that anyway. But um, you know where he needs to go back to one of his former clubs to rekindle his form. Actually, I was thinking about that. Not United, Birmingham City. 
Scored yeah. four in his debut against Sheffield. Yeah, I remember Wednesday. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get but, him back. But look, at the end of the day, when these players end up going to places like that, it's almost a last throw of the dice, isn't it? And well, it's I, such I a different, it yeah, like, it's culture thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's difficult. Like, if you if you know you're coming to the end of your career, I'd just be like, well, I always think as well, you do the Steve Sidwell effect, I call it. You know you're coming to the end of your career, just try and play for as many clubs as you can. Because when it comes to Europa League nights and they're looking for a Brighton pundit, get yourself in there, boy. You've got yourself a job. Lovely you crack stuff. on. Talking about Brighton, maybe another potential Pratt of the Week, De Zerbi, yes. after the game with Liverpool, talking about his future and basically saying, I don't know, I've got to yeah. see if they match my ambitions, etc. Yeah, ambition and just very transparent conversation, which is something probably as neutral fans that we like. But if you're a Brighton fan, you're probably just thinking, keep this in-house. Like, mm. there's obviously been the reports with Liverpool. You didn't like those reports you don't think he's good enough for them do you I'd, I'd be happy with you go I mean what the question I'm asking is the Alonso things fell through yeah why now are Liverpool not going all in on Southgate I mean it's it's an obvious connection you know yeah, he's, yeah. He's, had, he's had a couple of weeks with the United yeah but you know but, why that is why it's not because Liverpool not are switched on no no because Man United have already signed sealed and delivered it Liverpool are switched on they would they would rather Didn't Jason Wilcox play with Southgate as well Oh, the connections, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I think Michael Edwards drove past him on the M6 once <laughs> as well. But no, I think that um, the, the reason Southgate is not being linked with Liverpool is because they're bloody switched on and they, they'd rather employ you. They'd rather have us as a couple of managers. Yeah. And, I, and I'd sabotage it as a United fan on purpose. When are you next getting in the dugout? I don't know yet. I don't know. Wait, on, wait on a few calls. Maybe a pro clubs team. Maybe, maybe I'll start that. Um, but I'm playing a bit in the summer. We'll give you more details of yeah. that. But I think with Deserby, yeah, my bottom line is with Deserby is that it's amazing how the media and fan fans as well um, create a rhetoric around certain people. We see it with players a lot where they're rated, but they're they're overrated. Like mm. they're, they're just popular. Well, if you look at Deserby harshly, year one did really well. Year two, season's over in March. Like their season was over in mid-March when they got knocked out by Roma. They're not in the race for the Europa League or the Conference League. And Well, no, yeah, but they're in ninth. They're only, yeah. if it goes down to seventh, they're only two points but up then, West Ham. Yeah, but they're not going to do but it. This, but that's what I mean, because I think... Why it, is he being touted as a Liverpool coach when he's had a disastrous season? I don't think he's had a it, dira- but, oh, disastrous injury season. injury and Brighton. Brighton have been a bloody decent team for years. But also they're, they're ninth in the Premier League. Crap. That's not. Come on. Battered by Roma, battered by Fulham, yeah, but battered that's, by Luton. Yeah, but that's Brighton, and then they can go and stuff someone four 0 Been battered the other more than a fish. No, I, I generally think the expectations have come because of how well they did last season. But I don't know why he's being touted to replace Jurgen Klopp because he's the best of the rest, isn't it? So, well, what, so it's, who would you put? It's like from, looking at the bottom of a rabbit hutch. Well, who would you go, Eddie Howe? There isn't a, I mean I'm, Emery I'm, he's I'm, not moving That's the, and also these clubs are getting stronger and more powerful aren't they Villa have got billionaire owners Newcastle have got billionaire owners I think Liverpool's best place to go is Nagelsmann or Elmerham and also and, and they're yeah. not they're not open goals like I don't think the manager markets I mean Jurgen but, Klopp I mean you look at Jürgen, the Liverpool fans look you've got a really good team and there is a lot to be you know confident about but what happens with Van Dijk what happens with Salah what happens with Trent Jurgen Klopp is going to be such a massive loss. Yeah, I, and, yeah, I agree um, with that. I just think that it also proves that that like people are seeing if 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 there's five Champions League places, that means also because there's a clear top three, and that almost means now with Man United not doing well, Chelsea's thinking out the joint. There's two places up for grabs, and if you're West Ham fans, probably think they can get up there. Brighton fans think they can get up there. Newcastle, Spurs, like you could put yourself in a new top six or a new top five. It's a cliche and people always use lions in this. You know, you know, you got the, the, the leader of the pack, the right. lion, but they always get taken on by the younger pups at some point. Nice. Well, I'm not going to use lions. I'm going to use turtles because it's very, very similar. Turtles hang around in packs. And when the oldest turtle, who's really tough, right, when they sense an opportunity, the younger turtles, terrapins, I think they are, they will come and basically headbutt the turtle's shell until it's dead. Right. So that is what so, that's what might happen with Liverpool. I right. think Liverpool. Well, let's go back to Lions. So the, the Lion is the leader of the pack, yeah. and the younger Lions are going. Jurgen Klopp is untouchable, and right. then one of them goes, "Oh, look! I think he's Lee. I think he's. I think he's. I think his back end's going. He definitely is. Look at the, there's a bit of poo coming out. He's he's vulnerable. Right. So they just go, let's go for it, and then the next thing you know, poor old big Lion is dead at the bottom of a cliff. So that's a bit like Southgate with Ten Hag then. No, get lost. South <laughs> Southgate's like, I mean, I mean, bloody Ten Hag could be a lion on his last breath and still knock Southgate out. <laughs> That's 
<laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, but I think anyway, Pratt of the week for me. Probably, oh, it's got to be the refs. I'd go Chelsea. I think that's uh, maybe stinking. get in the comments. What do you think? Um, yeah, the fixtures this week just on obviously Chelsea, Man United just finishing on them. Are you confident going into that one? No, no, you just can't. You, you don't know what I, you're going to get. I, I, I think that's where Man United have been performing at the best. As well, I, aren't they? I, I would go with the Man United win, but you watch them against Brentford and they'd get beat by anyone. So. And obviously, you're doing the big watch along for Bournemouth Crystal Palace this week. Oh, yeah. Exclusively can't... watching that one. Yeah, yeah. Won't be watching anything else this week. It's all about that game. Bournemouth Crystal Palace, who gives a shit? <laughs> They're both safe, aren't they? Uh, that's, that's, not safe from your that's terror. That's sponsored by um, Jet Two Holidays on the beach. Yeah, get yourself there. Um, right, should we move on to Goldbridge? Yes. Um, because it's midweek. There's a full fixture list we've got to review last week. Uh, we haven't got a graphic designer at the moment. So every time we go into a weekend, we like, what have we done? Well, yeah. Mark, I can tell you. Um, at the weekend, I had Cole Palmer with two. Yeah. And Muniz got one. So I had three. I was buzzing. Well done. You had four. Uh, you had Isaac two penalties, Huming Son and Louis Diaz. I'm so good. You are good. I'm even you? trying not to win. So what's the to- what's the scores on the doors? 54 42. Oh, it's over. So we've got a punishment, which we've still not confirmed, but we kind of confirmed, but it's looking like it's me. So I'm, I've actually got a new idea for you to propose after okay. the thing, um, because otherwise it's not looking too good for me. I've got the fixtures there. If you want to have a look as well, that's all of them. Um, okay. If you want to do yours, you can start because you're champion and you have advantage. Um, I will go for, well, I'm going to start off with um, Newcastle against Everton and I'm going to go with uh, Gordon. Gordon. Is he suspended? Is he? He's got sent off. <laughs> I'm trying to let I you sh- win. I should have let you. I'm trying to let you win. Know. Okay, I will move on to uh, Bournemouth against Palace and just be boring and say I will go with Solanke. I will go for Mateta. Mateta. Mateta, who plays for Palace. Crystal Palace. Good point. Good point. Um, I'll go with. Um, I'll go West Ham Tottenham because yeah. I'm going to be watching this on That's Football and I'm going to go with Bowen. Nice. I'm going to go with West Ham Tottenham. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Human Son. As my, that's like my dirty banker for the week. Okay. Third game, I'm going to go Brentford against Brighton. He was he was a try-hard try Tony against um, Man United, but I, I don't think he'll go two goals without... Two games without a goal, so I'll go Tony in that one. Um, I will then go to... Uh, speak your words, Will. I'll go to Burnley versus Wolves. No, I won't. I'll go. Sorry. I've just lost my head completely. I'll go Nottingham Forest Fulham and I will go for how much wood would a woodchuck chud if Chris Wood would score goals. There you go. I'm going to go ridiculously niche on this one because I've got such a big lead I can be arrogant. They're away to Man City. I'm going to go Ollie Watkins. Wow, nice. That's yeah. something you'd like to see so you can yeah. do a double cheer then, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. So you started. That and was your niche. fourth pick. I will go really niche. I'll go for... You go niche. I'll go niche. Liverpool. No, you need to go obvious, mate. This is why you lose. Let me finish. I was doing a joke. I'm going to go for Mohamed Salah. Oh, well done. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, fair, fair play. Uh, I've got to go Chelsea, Man United. Um, I can't go against my own club. Uh, we're away to Chelsea. I'm going to go for Rasmus. He will get a chance. He will score a goal. Okay, I'll stick with that game and I'll go with... Is Garnacho fit? Yeah. Garnacho. Defender? Uh, defender, I'm going to just go for Arsenal against Luton um, dreams do come true it'll be Gabriel I'm going to go for a Wolves double defender and goalie I'm going to go Craig Dawson and Jose Sarr okay I'm going to go for a goalkeeper called uh, Neto who plays for Bournemouth love <laughs> you're saying that like you're trying to convince yourself I have Neto that plays for Bournemouth um, it's 12.55 as a recording can I just give you my guess who yeah okay doesn't really matter I think uh, I'll do a guess who yeah, you think of one then uh, should I do mine first yeah Oh, it's not printed on this sheet. What's of paper. the score on this? Uh, it's ten six currently. Uh, I did you've, you've you've messed it up, haven't you? No, I haven't messed it up. I just haven't printed out on that particular sheet of paper. So there's a there's a sheet of paper in the printer, but it's ten six. We haven't sorted a forfeit out for this one, but uh, don't worry about that because here we go. My one is I started my career at Blackburn Rovers the year after they won the Premier League, but I only made four appearances for them. Oh my God. A year after they won the Premier League and I only made four appearances for them. Yeah. Um, I think he won it with them and he would have played a lot more games. Um, Henningberg? Incorrect. I have five caps for England, but all of them came in 2003. Five caps for England, 2003. Um, bloody hell. 
It's going to be a goalkeeper, I think. And I'm going to go with five. Yeah, Ian Walker. Incorrect. He didn't play for Blackburn either. Uh, don't think he did, no. After Blackburn, my career path is Southampton, Everton, Sheffield United, Stoke, Rangers, Sheffield United and Accrington Stanley. Read them again. Blackburn. Blackburn, Southampton, Everton, Sheffield United, Stoke, Rangers, Sheffield United and Accrington Stanley. So I need to burp. <sighs> I don't know. I, 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 I can't speak. Everton was one of them, was it? Yeah. I don't know. Dave Watson. It's not him. Oh, oh what a... No. Oh. I used to play for Everton centre back. Um, oh. My most successful patch of my career came at Southampton where I played 204 times and scored 68 goals. Oh, it's that um, Norwegian striker. No, he's not Norwegian because he wouldn't have played for England. Um, can't be Norwegian if he played for England. Stop, <laughs> stop knocking your eyes up. <laughs> not um, well, sure. I want to knock him up. Chris Sutton, no. No, incorrect. I once headbutted Tony Pulis in the shower naked. Oh, this is ridiculously niche. No, that's not niche. I can't remember anyone doing that. James Beatty. Yeah, I do remember him. Yeah. Never was never going to get that, to be fair. That's your era, but probably a bit after, actually. It's the, you, I, I, honestly, that's the, the, this is the first time I've had James Beatty in my mouth for about 10 years. <laughs> That's, that's that's, that. I didn't mean that one. I mean that. Yeah, yeah. Filth, filth. I know what you lot are thinking about. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. haven't said the word James Beatty in about a decade. Uh, there oh, any, th there's, there's a great one for the chat. I want to see some of these. Give me a footballer that you haven't said their name in at least a decade. You can't do it. Ronnie Johnson. Ronnie Johnson. That's a good one. I would say someone like Steve Nichol. No, I have said him because he's a crappy ESPN pundit. Edwin van der Howe. What about that left back that used to play for Everton and Spurs, Pat Vandenhow? Remember him? No, don't remember him. Yeah, he was a he was a really quite rough. Alan Wright. Alan Wright, yeah, good one. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of Blackburn play. What's what was that wink? Stuart Ripley. Yeah, nice. Yeah. This is a good game. Let us know some in the chat. Right, you're gonna get this very quickly, I think. Uh started my career at Northampton Town, scoring eleven goals in fifty three games. Adebayo I can firm one. No. Yeah. Um, I have played for England twice, scoring one goal. How many? To, how many? What was the uh, Northampton record? Fifty-three and eleven. Uh, and I played for England twice with one goal. Dave Nugent. No. Clue three. Um, I was at Newcastle for three years. Yeah. Uh, uh, have two loans at Barnley, Bur Barnsley. <laughs> uh, Shrewsbury Town loan, Scunthorpe loan, Wigan loan, Scunthorpe loan. Then signed for Peterborough United, where in 2018, scoring 76 goals. Sorry, 76 Ivan appearances, Tony. 40 goals. Yeah. Nice. Hold well on. You got that a bit slower than I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and I just like, because when you do them rushed, it's always from something you spoke about in the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm that 10 basic. 7. 10 7. Wow. I'm not, I need the drama. To, I, I, this is like the fill in when I was winning and yeah. I just stopped caring. And then, you know, Foster will not stop caring. He, he he does a fucking quiz every 10 minutes. Big shout out to that guy on TikTok. If you've not seen it, he did a fantastic impression of the villain. He did. Well. It was absolutely brilliant. But I would have thought Ivan Tony played more than two games for England. No, because he only just started recently. I, I don't know. I know, but that's just my thought process. Um, absolute legends. Uh, remember, this is your podcast. So spread the word and get in the community. We don't need guests. We will, we've got a guest on next week. <laughs> 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 we have got a guest on the next podcast. But you're the guest. Yeah. In fact, you're more than that. You are you are the podcast. So remember, we say Ultras, how it is on here. Ultras. Ultras. Uh, give us a follow. Make sure you keep giving us those five stars, telling people about it. We're moving with this podcast. We're approaching uh, the end of the season and our first full season and we're loving it. Yeah, uh, I'm loving you. I wouldn't go that far. Um, talking about sacking managers and new contracts, of course, Will's contract is up at yeah. the end of the season. Oh, it's tough. That's good. He's got to do well in the next few weeks. I'll tell you what, if you can catch me up on that guess who, yeah. you might stay. And if I do, it goes to a poll. Yeah. Do I have a contract for next season? Yes or no? Let's, let's, we'll just do a poll anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I think that is ruthless aggression that I want in my football club and you'll certainly get it in the podcast. Yeah. Candidates to replace him at the moment. Uh, People's Pundit. Um, Dean Ellis, Gaffney. Ellis Platten. Ellis Platten. No, these, they'd be a good replacement. I'm trying I'm really, really rubbish ones. Uh, who, who's desperate looking for a job? Uh, Little Mo from EastEnders. Yeah. Um, 
Who are we else is looking for a side gig? I can't Luke remember. Littler. No, yeah. well, yeah. he's, he's the main he'd, man he'd at the be moment. way better than you. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was he'd, giving he'd, it to Neil Mopai, wasn't he? He's got a bit of interaction. He's got a bit Maybe of banter. Maybe get him in. He has got oh, a bit of banter. You know what? I'll resign. That'd be a good idea to get Luke Littler on a podcast. I don't think anyone's done it recently. No. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Steady Take now. care.